Hello group, Jeff here. Today, today's video is going to be uh, from a request that Simon made to show how I processed or sweetened Mickey's Deep Sky Lucky imaging image that he sent me. And there was such a big difference between what he sent me and my final uh, image that I posted that uh, Simon felt that it would be good that if I could show how I did that. And that's what we will talk about. But first, what I want to talk about, because I'm a Photoshop guy, and I know there's quite a few people on the group that are Photoshop guys or gals, is that in this uh, March of 2022, the Sky and Telescope, right there, this article, which is called Break Bad Photoshop Habits, is a very good article on how to use adjustment layers, smart filters, and smart objects. And the reason why you would want to use those is those are non-destructive. I don't necessarily like to do those because I don't save my uh, PSD files. Uh, those can get rather large. But if I were, what I would do is use uh, adjustment layers, smart objects, stuff like that, uh, because they're non-destructive, where if you create a duplicate and then apply an adjustment, that destroys the, the original <clears throat> data and replaces it with whatever you said okay to, versus an adjustment layer, which is non-destructive which means you can go back into that layer and make changes to whatever you had. And I'll show you how that's done. Um, I would also like to thank Alan for helping me out with uh, better understanding some of the workings behind this Deep Sky Lucky imaging. Sometimes the universe lends a helping hand, and that was Alan this time around. So thank you, Alan. And let's get at it here. So I'm going to open up Photoshop. I'll get rid of my puss so that I'm not hiding anything. And I have two images. Mickey sent me a JPEG and a TIFF file. The TIFF file is 16-bit. Oops. 16-bit and the JPEG isn't. But what I will do is using the JPEG, I'll, I'll just add a cup couple of adjustment layers. So there's a couple ways you can get at adjustment layers. I'm using the Essentials, which is the default workspace in uh, Photoshop, and you can get that from Workspace Essentials default. And then what that'll give you is uh, an adjustment window where you can pick adjustment layers that you would like to try. Or you can go to Layer new adjustment layer, and then you can pick your adjustment layer here. I like this way because I'm not too far from where I'm working over here. So what I'll do is I'll add a curve, and you can see that it's added the curve adjustment and a mask. And because the mask is white, it's going to affect the whole image. You can remove the mask, like, just take it to the trash can and then you just have the adjustment layer to play with doesn't matter so what I'll do is I'll just make a change for the sake of making a change here And then what I'll do is go back to my adjustments, and now we'll add a level. And for the he heck of it, <clears throat> let's see what we look like here. Now we're not too bad. We're all kind of lined up. So I'll just move the black point a little bit. 
And what that's allowed me to do is now, if there's something that I'm not happy with, say in the curves, I can go back and make changes on that. Where before, if it was a normal image adjustment, I would lose the ability to go back and do that. So uh, again, when I start working on Mickey's image, I will not be using adjustment layers only because uh, I don't care to save the file when I'm done. I just, uh, it takes a lot of storage to save off PSD files. And sometimes you can get over two gigabytes with those. And when that happens, it goes into another form of a PSD file to handle all that data. Because each one of these layers is basically the same image as the base layer or your background layer. So however big this one is, multiply that out by however many layers you're you have, and then you can see how big a PSD file can get in a hurry. So if you've got 10 layers and it's a 10 meg file, that's 100 megs. They get big. So I will uh, delete the JPEG. Oops, I don't want to save. And what that leaves us with is the TIFF file. And I just really want to make sure that I'm in 16 bit, which I am. And uh, I'm going to break the cardinal rule and make a duplicate layer and call it denoise. And the first thing I will do is add a filter, my Astroflex filter. And what this will do is flatten the image. And I'm using 32-2020. So I'm very happy with this. And I must say that uh, Mickey has, has struggled, as he has said, with the LHDR technique, and uh, mainly because of tracking. It, he has a big job, and uh, it doesn't necessarily track for more than 30 seconds, maybe a minute at most. And if you start accruing stacks, <laughs> big stacks, say into the 15 to 20, maybe even 30 minute range, he just can't hold his stars. And it, it, he has what I felt were soft images. And what the Deep Sky Lucky imaging will do is it doesn't care about tracking because the exposures are so short. And, uh, he can stack those much easier and the proof is in the pudding here i mean his stars these are the best stars i've ever seen out of mickey they're beautiful and this is only 280 2.4 second uh exposure images so i mean we're well on our way to uh having something pretty special with that with his gear so the next thing I want to do is I'll just zoom in a little just to see where we are with the noise. And I can live with this, this noise. It's not that bad. So I'm not even going to do a denoise. I'm going to make two duplicate layers. And then I'm going to run my <clears throat> star exterminator. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> now this could be Starnet plus plus. In my case, I'm a Star Exterminator guy. These two go back and forth. Star Exterminator is faster because it uses the GPU, which has more floating point cores, versus Starnet plus plus, which is using the CPU. Now I don't know what happened with the latest update if he's changed his code to be able to use the uh, GPU floating port cores. But if that happens, then that'll even them up a little bit, but they go back and forth. Competition is good. So I'm going to pick my Starnet 
or I'm sorry, my star exterminator. And I'm just going to say OK. And this shouldn't take too long because it's a small image. As you can see, it's uh, 1852 by 1388, I think. Small text, bad eyes. <clears throat> and once we have the stars removed, like we do right now, I will make another layer and call this starless. And then the one below that, I will make that a subtracted layer and then merge that down and call it stars. And we can see if I drag this up that there's our stars. And what this is probably the first time that I've actually seen star colors with Mickey's uh, stuff. So we're, ze we're zeroing in on some uh, pretty nice routines. Now my plan is to, uh, once I can start going out again, is work on a flow that I can uh, show the group. I can talk about this until I'm blue in my face, but until there's actually a workflow that people can do, it won't make a lot of sense to, to some. So if you can bear with me, I'm probably looking at uh, May or June before I get to that point, uh, only because of the weather. I'm, I'm weather dependent and I'm still in my cloudy season. So uh, we'll get there. We'll get there. But the, it's good to see star colors. We've got blue stars, yellow stars, white stars. That's just a good a good thing. So this layer I would make linear dodge. And then uh, there's a couple ways you can change the size of these stars and the intensity. Whoops. Is by lowering the op opacity. I don't like to do that only because I like to see the points. If you start lowering the opacity, then the stars pulling some of that background color in, which I that's not good for a star. So I, I would use on the star layer, I would use uh, star shrink and bring them down, but I won't do that till the very end. So I'm going to go into starless here. Turn off my star layer. And I'm going to go and create another duplicate and call it camera. And again, I'm using duplicates because I don't care that I'm destroying the data because I'm not going to save this. And now that I have the camera, I will actually load camera. Law. Now, if I wanted to make this and something that I could go back and adjust, you would convert this layer to a smart filter and then load the camera raw filter. And then you could go back into this layer and make adjustments, which is unique. So I will start the camera raw filter. And I like uh, to just click on the auto button to see what it does. And I can tell you right now that this isn't that bad. We just need to tweak some of the settings. And what I usually do first is bring down the exposure and leave the other settings. And that will get your background back into shape. I like a little contrast. I always like my contrast at least eight. And that helps. Uh, set the mood here. My highlights, I might go 40 there. Bring this down. Do 56. Whites. 24. And the blacks. Not too bad.
Okay, now I'll start bringing up some texture. I don't like going more than 16. You can see what it's doing. Starting to add some definition, the clarity. I don't like to go much more than 24. And maybe a little dehaze, not a lot. The vibrance I'll kick up. Uh, and what I will say, uh, and this has got nothing to do with uh, Mickey, uh, but he has the raw data. And uh, if you notice the difference between my processed image and what he posted, because he has that raw data and he's continually playing and getting better with his technique, it shows in that image. And I only have the one TIFF file to play with. And that one TIFF file, whatever data was embedded in that when he sent it to me is what I have to play with. So you'll see that he has more blue. His blues look better. His star forming regions look better, but that's okay. It was, we're just trying to prove the technique out. So now I will go to details and add a little sharpening, not a lot, maybe 32, some noise reduction, 32, bring up the, and I'm happy with this. We've got some cool things going on. We can see the arms, the structures, a lot of cool stuff in this image. So I'm going to say, okay. And you can see the difference between pre and post. And if I add the stars in, it's looking pretty dramatic. Uh, but what I want to do before I do that, I'm just going to drag the star layer down. And then I have a new plugin called APFR. And what APFR does is a... Uh, sharpening routine that adds some depth to the image and uh, what I will do is go super fine or extra fine sorry and you want to set the radius so that the image isn't blurry and right now we've got a little blur going on so I'm going to back off on this a little bit Yeah, that looks better. So now I'm going to run the sharpen. And then I'm very happy with this. So I will drag my star layer back up. And I'll do a little vibrance here. Just to help the colors. A little saturation. You can see the yellow stars are now yellow. <laughs> so we'll stick to that and I will do a little star shrink on them. That looks good. And that's how I processed Mickey's image. Now just to show you, I will save this to the desktop, just so you can see. Do a save as, save on my computer. We will make it a Photoshop PSD file. We will go to the desktop and we'll save it. And it'll bark at you. So here it is. And it is 204 megabytes. <clears throat> and that is How many layers? Five layers? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven layers. 
and that's a 204 megabyte file. So you can see as you start stacking up these layers, whether they're adjustment layers or uh, destructive duplicate layers, it adds up fast. The difference is that if you're using adjustment layers, you can go back, you could save uh, the PSD file, open it up at a later point, and start playing with the image again at the same starting point that you had when you saved the file. And that's huge. I mean, if I was uh, back in the old graphics days, Jeffy's graphics days, I would be using adjustment layers like there's no tomorrow. Because uh, my biggest problem was clients making changes. And now that you can do it to the same file instead of starting over all the time, <laughs> this is huge. So I hope that you enjoyed this. It's, uh, I think this technique has some huge potential for a lot of people. Uh, I'm working on a, f a workflow that uh, will use Mellencamp Sky for this to do the acquisition, not the stack. And uh, at the moment, I, my plan is to use Cyril to do the pre-processing and stacking. And then uh, from there, you can save to any format to bring it into whatever program you want to sweeten it, whether it's PixInsight, Photoshop, uh, Corel, whatever you guys and gals use, uh, I'm going to uh, work on a workflow for, for everybody to try the same technique. It's uh, uh, the guy that actually pioneered this wrote his own code and has has not released it. And his code was 32 bit. So he pressed it guided and uh, acquired and stacked all of 32 bit. I mean, it, it was uh, kind of a neat little thing that the guy made. But I don't blame him for not releasing it because once you release it, then you got to support it. <laughs> and that's not going to be fun when, uh, when you've got uh, something that you never planned on releasing and now, now you have to support it. So this is a great image out of Mickey's 22. Uh, not because I worked on it, but just because there's the, the, he's got good data for a change. And this is a gorgeous image of M33. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the roof if you have any questions.